Hey everybody, this is Amanda with Brownie Stitch Love and I just got off work and as you can tell, Laddie is feeling some nut much definitely need to be love time. But I wanted to show you guys my new stitchy spot. Oh, lovely son. Go ahead and scratch. Um, it is a chase lounge that is my was my sister's in her sunroom. I'm going to show it to you guys because I'm very, very much in love with it. Um, her kids are gone off to college. She's got her a new living room suit. So, guess what? I got the chase lounge. Um, we worked a deal. So, here we go. Um, I figured I would do just a little bit quick of a cross stitch update. And I have Rena. Oh, I can't say their names. Baby girl and oldest son in the room with me right now. Because they think it's the coolest thing that Joe did a shout out. So, Joe, thank you. Um, Sam's... I said his name. My oldest son, Mr. S, says that uh, I am a hoot at times, except for when I get mad. So, thank you so much for commenting. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you some of our issues. we got going on. Bob, are you? Hey, Bob, come here. You want to go up here, too? Come on. Come on, babe. So, I have Laddie right here, and apparently he is going to model for the video. We're in my master bedroom. I do have a lamp. Ooh, that sucker looks bright. Let me see if I can turn it off and it'll make a difference. Actually, much better. Um, it's got a really high whatever voltage bulb in there, but I'll turn the light back on when I'm showing you the needle monitors. Um, I got a new needle monitor today, and my husband actually went to the mailbox before I did. Oops. And he said, just exactly how many do you have? Well, I didn't count them, so I'm going to show you. Um, it's taken a little bit over a year. But now, understand, a lot of these are needle monitors that have been bought. And they're also pieces of jewelry that I've turned into needle monitors because of years of collecting. So, I figured I'd go ahead and show you. Look at that! Okay, I bought a TARDIS. And then, if you get, if you purchase, I think when your first two or three purchased you will get a free minder from Nifty Needle Nanny. So I told her to surprise me, and I got a smaller version of my TARDIS. Um, I figured I would go over these and kind of tell you. Yes, it looks like I have a mental illness, and if my mother saw this right now, she'd probably admit me somewhere. Um, this one right here, the bottle cap, Minding My Minders. If this is a bottle cap, it came from Minding My Minders. These Precious Moments ones came from Minding My Minders, the Fragility. Tinkerbell, and I believe there's, oh my gosh, my necklace took into the board. Uh, the Cheshire Cat and Alice also came from My Need My Minders. And let's see if we can go over some any of the others. Okay, the Snowflake Top came from Gina's Unique Boutique. The, square, the Alabama Square Tile is from My Need My Minders and the classic Winnie the Pooh. Let's see here. Fox came from Hobby Lobby. And I turned it into a needle minder. This is from Gina's. 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 This is Nifty Needle Nannies. This is from eBay. Pen ordered. Turned into a needle minder. This is from Nifty Needle Nannies. This is from Nifty Needle Nannies. This Weeping Angel is from Nifty Needle and Nannies. Thank you, Katie the Stash Queen, for bringing that up. Shame. Let's see here. Um, Cinderella and New Kids on the Block, because I will just go ahead and tell you, I was a serious Joey Joe fan for years. Um, this right here is, I don't know if you can see it, Open Your Heart and Your Home. It's the State of Alabama um, Campaign for Adoption Advocacy. So, it was a pen of mine, and I liked it, so I turned it into a needle liner. Um, Reprimandic Fripperies, I bought this one, the Hot Air Balloon. I believe it says stitch by stitch, legendary stitch by stitch. Let's see the puppy dog I got off of eBay and turned it into a needle minder. This was our coin at church, turned it into a needle minder. This pin right here, and there's another Christmas tree pin, I believe. And that frog. And let's see what else. I'm looking at my reflection, pointing these out. What else? Okay, the Santa Claus that you see, the mouse reading books, that's from Minding My Minders. Okay, my TARDIS here, this first TARDIS, the first big TARDIS, came from Sarah's Creations, and so did this beautiful cat. 
And that's when I realized that, you know, that I had to have so much more. Um, this flower and this frog. Okay, flower, frog. I'm trying to go through here so I can tell y'all what these are. Mouse, Christmas tree. There's another Christmas tree, another frog. And let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on this particular board. Those all came from my husband's grandmother when she passed away. When they and there's a frog running. Right no, no, he come off of eBay. Um, when she passed away, they started at passing out jewelry, and none of the grandkids wanted the pins. They're like, just give them to the thrift store. Well, you know what this girl said? Uh uh. So I took them home and I turned them into needle minders. So that made it even special. This creature I got from Walmart for like, I'm talking like 75 cents. He's got two prongs. He's supposed to be this huge thing. I turned him into a needle minder. My angel turned into a needle minder. She's actually porcelain, so I have to be careful with her. The fish, the owl, this big like beta fish, this dragon. Let's we'll see what else. I'm trying to think. That's grandmother's. And let's see. I'm trying to think what else I've turned into that I got off of eBay. Because when I found out that you could order pens off of eBay and get the grinder out, it was on. It was on like Donkey Kong. I was making needle minders. And I'll show you how they come. And if you guys, you know, think it's something you want to do, it's really easy to do. Um, ordered these off of eBay, turned them into needle minders. This owl. I ground the back. I got the hiccups. I'm sorry. I ground the back and then put the magnet on him with E6000. It's really, it's really simple and easy to do. Uh, the mom rocks thing came from Michael's. Rock on sister came from Michael's. Where's my giggle baby? I must have my giggle baby on a whip somewhere because I absolutely like that's my favorite needle minder because to me it's the first one I made. Um, let's see. That one come from Monday, my minders. No, Nifty Needle Nannies, I believe. And the bling mixer. And this one, Nifty Needle Nannies. Uh, this, this pen right here, Jesus' Reason for the Season, and the Noah's Ark pen were mine. They were on scarves um, growing up. Because I told you I was a 90s child. I was born in the 70s, but I was in college in the 90s. Um, Nemo and Dory. They're actually a funny story because they didn't come from the same place. They actually came from, I believe, Minding My Minders and Nifty Needle Nannies. Um, the two, the angel and the puppy for Valentine's, I should be using them now. They came from Gina's Unique Petite. The dragon, he's actually popular right now. I bought him at Hobby Lobby. Ground the back off of him. Slapped some E6000 and made me a needle minder. And I bought him at Gulf Shores, Alabama on the beach. That was my souvenir. Um, I had a big Noah's Ark fetish, as you can tell. I have another Noah's Ark here that I turned into a needle minder. Um, he was easy to do because the pen was so old. I just ground it out, smoothed it out, put the glue, and made me a Noah's Ark. Um, I have a weenie dog person. I think you guys know that. So, turned him into a needle minder. Let's see what else. Slay your own dragons because we absolutely love that. Spider. He's um, e eBay, Hobby Lobby. All my books came from Hobby Lobby. All these little Jack Skellingtons and things like that, they came from Minding My Minders. Singer came from, obviously, So the Store. Shorter University, that's my alma mater. That's where I'm going. Uh, that's a bookmark, and don't laugh, but it does look like a commode lid. So it looks like a commode seat lid, but it's actually a bookmark that you can flip on the pages, so I actually keep it on there. Little Mermaid, Mickey and Minnie come from Minding My Miners. Yes, okay. This pin right here came from Disney World. Self-explanatory, turned it into a needle minder. Um, I'm, and let's see, of course, we have Grumpy Cat. No, because my kids say that's one of my favorite words. Let's see, what else here? Hobby Lobby, it's a little fairy. Snail, come from Gina's Unique Boutique. I'm just showing you all this. I don't know if you want to see it or not. But I just, I don't know. My husband says I have a fetish. 
Obviously, I do. He came from Hobby Lobby, eBay, Hobby Lobby, Genus. And then all these bottle caps. And I guess one day I'll break them out. But I've got Garfield. Who is that? It's a lovely holiday with Mary. Y'all know who that is. These are Minding My Minders. That's Ariel, Linus, and Merida. Favorite redhead. Ariel, you know, it's my favorite Disney movie ever. Ever, 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 ever. And I just, I don't know. And then, of course, that is a lapel pin, Precious Moments. And there's another Precious Moments right here. And it's Mother So Dear. It's actually a figurine that I have. And I ground it off and turned it into a pin. So, it's really easy to do. 90% of what I've got has been turned. Not, no, 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 you know what? Obviously, I'm not a mathematician. Not 90%. Oh, gumball machine. Genus. And what I got today was the pot of gold because I realized that of all the little holidays, I don't have anything for, you know, look at the Irish. St. Patrick's Day. Veggie Tales for my kids. Rapunzel for my daughter. Wreck-It Ralph for my kids. Baymax, because Baymax is rocks. Little Mermaid. Cinderella. New kids you saw. Inside Out, because I'm studying psychology. Who wouldn't love that movie? Beauty and the Beast. Frozen. Hocus Pocus. Goonies Never Say Die. Baby Groot. Wizard of Oz. A blingy, which I don't understand why I ordered it blingy, but that's just me. How to Train Your Dragon, Scooby-Doo, Ghostbusters. You know, it just it just rocks. So, it is a mental illness. It is an obsession. But, um, I don't know if we've ever had Show Your Needle Minder videos. But, I did one today because, seriously, it's my bling. I put it on my cross stitch. Yes, this is a board that my father-in-law made for my mother-in-law. When she was alive to hold her cross stitch patterns. It's metal on both sides. And I've actually put everything on the board to show you what, you know, all my needle minders. But actually what I do is I don't keep them out. I keep them in a tin box stacked up in our study in my kind of cross stitch room. There I keep my supplies, not where I stitch because I have to do schoolwork in there. But I can dream while I look at my goodies. Um, I will show you. I just keep tins. I like the big flat tins and I'm going to show those to you today. All right. Hi. And apparently my oldest child is going to sit here and he's going to hold his dragon while we do needle minders and cross stitch. Um, if you ever get a chance, ooh, what is that? Oh, okay. If you ever get a chance to eat Cadbury cookies, do because they're flipping awesome. <laughs> they're going to get cracked up at you. This is a, a, literally, this is the tin. I think I paid like three bucks Christmas clearance for Cadbury cookies. Normally my needle minders stay on this. And that board that I showed you with all the needle minders on it. We're messing around with photos. Huh? We're messing around with photos. Oh, okay. That board is normally empty. And this is what I use. Now, these are just plain old bottle cap hold, bottle caps. And I actually, before I found out about the Neodymium magnets, and I hope I'm saying that right and not slaughtering that word. I actually went to Hobby Lobby and I paid like two bucks maybe for these. These right here, these little cap, bottle cap, and I just stuck a magnet on there. Now, I thought that this would be a great thing for needle minders. It is, but it isn't. You need the neodymium. Um, let me just spell it for you so if I'm slaughtering it, you'll know what you're looking at. N-E-O... Now I need my cell phone. Annie O D Y N I U M. I will look that up while I've got you guys on the video. I just got off work, so you would think I would be better prepared, but no. That's just life. And I'm giving you a horrible chest shot today. Um either way, I make these, and what these do is they work really good, like holding your pattern up on the board. So if you want to Put your pattern on the board. You can stick it to that metal board. And that's where I keep my pattern 90% of the time. If not, you can get the Loran metal boards. I'm, I've got the big one, but I don't like it because it's got some really sharp edges and metal. And if you've ever met a klutz, I'm one. And I could probably cut myself with anything. 
and I have actually cut my hand on the lower end and the corners of the board. So I prefer to use this metal board that my father-in-law made for, for Deborah because it is actually a smoother. But these guys, these little magnets, Mike's hard lemonade, oops. Um, these magnets stay on that metal board and I just stick my pattern on. But today I got them out and showed them to you. Normally they're in this tin and don't laugh, but it still has the little paper that the cookies were sitting on. I kind of wiped it down. And when, um, and literally look at the dents from all the magnets. Um, I'm busy. And these are the magnet strips that go, and these are actually little containers that I put like, you know, little knickknack stuff in or, th or floss or whatever. But um, this is what my needle minders stay in. As you can tell, you can see the dents. I keep them in that. And I kind of lay a tissue paper between the top and the bottom. And yes, when you're trying to take the top off, it's, a, it's the dickens to open. Hey, will you go get my tin, my Altoid tin, or is it in here? I think it's in here, Mommy. Okay, well then go get that Hobby Lobby tin that's in the study, please. Okay. Me or Sam? You. And of course, you're going to see my diva. You've got stuff all over you. Oh my gosh. Hey, look at our sound. Sweet Cinderella. Sweet. Wee. Go. Okay. Wee. I I what I do is I keep all my magnets. And I want y'all to look at this. This is hilarious. I ordered these off of eBay. And obviously, I'm not a micrometers person. Look at that. Oh my gosh. My husband's We're totally like laughing at me. They're, they're literally like micro. There's like 50 of them on there. and But I've got plans for them, and I'll show them to you shortly. Yeah. I have an Altoid tin full of these. And look, see, there's the magnets I'm talking about. These are good for like sticking your paper oh, okay. to your refrigerator, to your metal board, but not to your projects because those magnets kind of bleed a little bit. And here's my magnets that I have left to do my projects with. Yeah, that's fine. Put it back over there. Good. All right, now I want to show you guys what I do. And there's a booty shot. Ow. And I'm going to sit on my oldest child's foot. You guys, they don't want to see him. They don't want to see him. Okay, what I do is I actually get, actually find me some stuff. Um, I shall be right, right Sure back. you will. Sure you will. I'm so worried. Everybody's got to come spend time with mom. Uh, here is what I'm making into a needle minder is a camera because I'm big on taking pictures with my kids and they decided that I needed a camera. Isn't that cute? It's got a flat back so they work really good. Uh, they're, you're showing these tiny. And then I found this the other day, a cameo. The Gilded Age Timeline, it was 50% off, so I think I got this thing for like two bucks. And it's got the smooth back, and I got it from Hobby Lobby. So I'm basically just going to slap a magnet on there and make a needle monitor. This has turned out to be my other, no, this has turned out to be my other hobby. We went to Five Below, and I'm addicted to the movie Inside Out, and I found these buttons for like three dollars. It's got Bing Bong and Disgust and... What's her name? Sadness and Joy. Um, in my office, we're fixing to redecorate my office at work, and I'm actually going to have the poster done where it's got the kid's head with all the emotions inside it because since I've studied um, human services and social work and psychology, that's just the human brain is just so, it's so complex and it's so exciting and it's so messed up. Okay, let's see here. Here's a charm that I got the other day, regular $3.99. It was, uh, had my, it, they were on sale 50% off, and it says, we're all mad here. Now, I've seen tons of people that have that needle binder. I think I paid two bucks for this thing, so by the time I do my glue and my cost of my magnet, I'll probably have three bucks in this. So, I mean, really, it's a bad addiction. I don't. I make jewelry sometimes for me. Um, this is a kind of a jewelry thing that I picked up at Michael's that was on clearance. And I just actually had some chain at the house and I just made a charm. I like dangly things. Um, sister, 
bring me that necklace right there. What necklace? The one hanging off my thing. What necklace? That one. This one? That one. This one? Y'all. Oh. Okay. This right here is like a little. Okay. Hold that up to the camera so they can see that. What, this? Yes, that. Okay. Hold it up. Here you go. Turn it right side. Turn it right side. This side. Mature, please. This right here is like a little bird. I actually paid a dollar and one cents with free shipping from China for that sucker. And it's going to be turned into a needle minder. I don't know. It might actually be a pin to wear. All yeah. right. And Sissy here is going to model the uh, ladybug that I got That's for a dollar and one cents. Hold on. It was easy. I just went on eBay and a bid. Now, what you do with those, back it up. What you do with those is you actually grind the backs off with a Dremel tool if you have one. If not, if your husband's handy. Mm -hmm. You just grind the backs off and you turn them into needle miners. And this one's called Woofy because I named him Woofy. And it's a regular, hold it up, hold it up straight. I don't know where. No, hold it down. Hold it, turn. There you go. Okay, she's holding it up. It's actually a puppy dog. Now flip it around so they can see the back. You've got an actual standard pen back, and what you do is you take your little, um, I'm going to have to get you to get my tool kit so I can explain it, because I don't know what they're called. They're like vice grips, and you twist off the, you can back it up so it'll focus. Okay. You can break off the two pin mounts, and then you can grind them down with a Dremel tool. And you've got yourself oh, under three bucks, a puppy dog. Okay. This was on clearance at Joann's for 75 cents. I know you're not eating those chips in my bedroom. She is. Uh, she won't be doing it anymore. And it's called Peace on Earth. It was regular $3.99 and it was on clearance like seven ninety cents or something like that. It was 90% off. You do the math. I'm I've had a full I've had a full day, so <sighs> y'all know what I mean. Okay. Here's another one, sister. Don't you dare get more chips. Don't you dare put them down. I'm not happy with you. I'm gonna do like Miss Molly. I love you. But I'm getting on to you because one of these days, I don't want you to have bugs in your house. All right, hold that up. That was the one that was the little snowman sweeping. I literally can tell you, I think I paid like a dollar and 25 cents for that. Um, This right here, I had already bought and I felt like a complete idiot. It's the no. Dress It Up Nightmare Before Christmas series buttons. Hold it up. And I bought these as needle binders, and I actually paid money for those, and I'm kind of not proud of that. But what you do is you just basically flip it around. Cut and grind off the button back, slap you a magnet on, and you've got needle binders. So, believe it or not, um, since I've got a subscriber anniversary coming up, I may be making those for needle binders and giving those as part of my giveaway because I'm really excited about all the... All these, all the new subscribers, you guys, it makes it makes you excited. I mean, I'm not, we're not celebrities by no means, but it makes you feel <coughs> special. Okay, show it. Next one is Nutcrackers. Those were on the Christmas clearance at Hobby Lobby. Seventy-five off, I believe. And flip it around the back so they can see the back. Yes, and see, it just turns into like grinding little pins. And we're going to slap some magnets on there, and we've got it. And in memory of my Deborah, I have monkeys. She loved sock monkeys. Those are, back up a little bit, those are the Sewology brand buttons, and they came from Hobby Lobby. <coughs> Bless you. This pen right here my daughter gave me, and she wants me to turn it into a needle minder. So, I'm going to. I thought that was very sweet of her. And in return, I'm giving her a cow. Yay! He's been yours the whole time. Jessica put him on a chain. Isn't he cute? We thought he'd be a cute needle minder, but then we looked at the back of it and I'm like, no, he needs to go on a necklace. So, 
sister's gonna start wearing that. You need to wear that one. So. That'd be cute. Okay. And let's see if I showed everything. Oh. You didn't show this or this. I'm not gonna show that. It's the Berry College Gristle Mill. I found it as a pin, and you can turn it into a necklace or a needle minder. And it's heavy ceramic. I don't think it'll make a good needle minder. Okay, and then this is from Retromantic Fripperies. This is a little floss holder needle gauge. I love that thing. I actually love smelling of it more than anything. Thank you. Thank you to the lovely Ray for enabling me and showing me that Retromantic Fripperies website because I bought those goodies. They came and I literally just, oh my gosh, the hickory smell of the wood was just amazing. Okay. And this right here is kind of an off-color joke, but I'm going to turn it into some type of a needle minder or a magnet. Is that just not tacky? Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, I paid like, what did I pay for that? 73 cents. Boy, I'm a big spender. Okay, so that are the upcoming needle minder projects, and that's the needle minders that I have. So, yes, I look like I have a serious mental disorder. Um, this right here is my new stitchy spot for right now and actually in the evenings quit. it is turned out to be a perfect thing and i'm going to try to show you guys what i got and then i try i'm trying to i seriously am trying to ground myself uh this is something that i wear all the time because i like dangling necklaces i've got my janelin thread cutter my normal is boring charm and then i've got the first initials of each one of my four kids in the order that they appeared and an angel charm for my Deborah. So, I absolutely wear this like all the time. And people think that I make jewelry. No, I don't. I just kind of... <coughs> Sorry. I'm sneezing on my video. I just kind of have things I love. So, you know, we all have things we love. So, oh my gosh, that's actually shorter. I need to, I need to switch those out, Donna. Do I need to switch those out? Oh, well. That's a topic for another day and another time. All right. You're here for the stitching, so let me show you my progress and plans and what's going on this week in the middle of cross stitch. Uh, you went past your 20 minutes. I know it. I told you, Daddy. It's already, already been 27 minutes. Wait. Yeah, 27 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay. Well, thank you for pointing out my flaws. Hey, mommy. What? Don't start with me right now. Okay, I love you, but this is not the time to talk about that. Okay, all right. Apparently, she wants to get contacts off of her brother's cell phone, and that's important to talk about right now while I'm doing the video. And now she's rolling her eyes and she's mad at me because I told you what she wants to do. Bubby, come here. Tell them about you. Come on. Come on. Okay. Let a man can tell you what happened. Um, I shared this on Facebook, so if you know me, um, I got a phone call from my parents who live down the road that Laddie had been hurt. And we needed to, that my daddy was going to check him out and just let him stay at the grandparents' house. And I said, no, I'm going to go get him. So I go to get Bubba. And when I do, I find out that um, he has four holes through and through. So we thought he had been mauled by another dog. We check him throughout the night. We give him pain meds that we can find, that we can give him. I take him to the vet, who's a close friend of mine, and he, he texts me like later on that day and says, your dog's been shot. So, we really don't know who would shoot a Winnie dog. I mean, there's a lot of farmland that we live on, but, and we don't have a lot of neighbors, but the one that we do have, maybe not the greatest person in the world. So, I did what the vet did. I went and filed a police report because odds are good, the Bubby Man was shot in our yard. I wouldn't stand there if I was you. It's for looks. It's not for purpose. Okay? So, um, if you sent messages or prayers when Lottie was sick, thank you so much. They were very heartfelt and they were heard. 
He ended up with a $300 vet bill, a hole in his, like four holes in his legs. He had to come home and soak every day in the tub, like twice a day or in the morning and in the night to drain the wounds in his legs. It was, it was horrible. And he actually still has a bullet in him for proof that he was shot. Where's she going? Did she leave you? So he is here with mama right now. The protection that I had for him has actually gotten worse. I didn't share, you know, I haven't shared that on the other videos. It's nuts. And to tell y'all something else that happened to us, December 31st, I went with my best friend who was committing to adopt a dog who's already regretting adopting a dog. She went and got a puppy, like a Schnauzer puppy breed from our um, no-kill shelter that we have locally. And I went with her to adopt this dog. And we came home. And my husband had some errands he wanted to go do. And our washing machine was acting wonky. So I was in the laundry room and I was trying, I had, I had fixed hot dogs for all the kids, which is not like it's that hard. Y'all know how to fix hot dogs. And I was in the laundry room and I was unloading the washing machine because it wasn't spinning good. Now it's a Samsung. We paid lots of money for it and it's three years old. This is not a marketing concept, commercial. This is just facts. All of a sudden I hear a blood curling scream from my youngest son, AC, and my oldest son is screaming, oh my gosh, get in here. And what had happened, and I'll try to, I don't know how to attach pictures, I'll have to figure that out one day. What had happened is my youngest son had put a hot dog in his mouth, and he's a six-year-old boy, so only boys would do this. He put a hot dog in his mouth and hung it down from his mouth. And had our dog, Laddie, here to share a hot dog with him, which I say is no-no and it's nasty. Well, when mom's not in the room, that's what we do. Um, long story short, we ended up going straight to the ER because AC had a huge gash in between his lip. He got two or three stitches. My husband met me there. He about fainted in a chair in the ER because my son wanted him close and he did not want to be close. But he got two stitches in his lip. He healed up fine. Lighty was sick. And um, we joked and said he got boy fever. But he was so upset at what he did. Um, we haven't been contacted, you know, to have the dog quarantine. Because he, he's a gentle creature. And he's up to date on his shots. So, it just, life was just really interesting, you know, for us. And then to top it all off, the washing machine died. And this was... New Year's Eve, and I told my husband, oh my gosh, 2016 has got to get better. I should have never, ever, ever said that because, you know, like three or four days later, my second day back to work is when we come home and Laddie was shot. So, it's been, it's just been one thing after another. Kids got a stomach virus, and then when I did my video last week, I was hopped up on steroids from bronchitis and they said it had turned into walking pneumonia i did not end up going on my trip i actually ended up staying home all week sick i would sleep 30 minutes i'd be up for two hours i'd sleep 30 minutes i'd be up for two hours because when you're on steroids it makes you feel that way so how that pertains to cross stitching i got a lot of stitching done and i got some project you know progress on things so that's what i'm going to show you guys and I'll get up so I can be close to the camera, but um, I'm going to go back and forth. So, I am absolutely, y'all, look at this. Oh, my gosh. I'm absolutely in love with this thing. And I can't sleep on it, so that's good. I mean, I could probably sleep sitting up because I'm a mother of multiple children and working. And by the time you cook supper, do laundry, you're just zonked. So, here is the whips and the progress of what's going on in my world. I finished Peter Pan. He's right here. I actually made the water like a turquoise. And to be honest with you, I've got to add mouth. Mouth to the mermaid and mouth to Peter Pan. Oopsie. And now my whips are sticking together. This always happens and bugs me. My needle munders stick together. And I know I need to separate them out, but I didn't want to. And now I wish I had. This is my Alice in Wonderland book. And you can tell it's been my favorite because I've used it for everything. And this is the one I got recently. Ooh, wait a 
minute. Oh, it's sticking to my necklace. I am just all sorts of junked up here. Um, here is my needle minder. Madman in a box, commemorating my love for the one and only Doctor Who. But I am now doing the square for Lady of Shalott. And then the next will be Phantom of the Opera. And then I'll be down to the bottom row. And I can't say that I hate this pattern, but I do. I don't hate it. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. If, if I had done the frames a different color, maybe I saw where somebody did the frames darker. I don't know. I don't know why I'm just not happy with this thing. I'll love it, and I'll say that I'll love it after it's done. But right now, I'm kind of putting it in the rotation to get it done. And, like, I started a new whip this week, and I'm like, why did I do that? But I'm trying to start to stitch from stash, and that's working out really good. Um, this was by Pound Mountain Designs, Wonderful Life. Life does not have to be perfect to be wonderful. This thing has been as the back. It's messy, but I could, you know, I don't know. Done all linen, I believe. 28 count linen. I'm not sure. It was it was two threads over two. So there you go. Um, I am actually got this done and these ooh. Crap bola. And after I cross stitched it, I went around with my sewing machine and edged it. So you'll probably see the edging. Because now it's leaving and it's going to my sister's house and she's going to help me make a pillow for my niece for Valentine's Day. Because believe it or not, she has all these colors in her comforter and I figured that that would look good in her apartment. Let's see, you've already seen the sorry about the mess, but we live here. So, pretty, pretty psyched about that. And then, all you need is love. Love is all you need. This sampler was um, All You Need Is Love by Jana Lynn. It's a little chalkboard, whatever, kit. and But I customized it to, say, the Beatles, you know, 1967. Because that was the year that the song was written and released. And um, that's just, I don't know, kind of got hooked on the Beatles in my later years. So, there you go. All You Need Is Love. Love is all you need. And um, I actually stitched this from a hubby, and I'm going to wash it up and get him a white frame. And if you do these kits with Jana Lynn, I'm not insulting their kits, but I'm just going to tell you, and there's the back. I don't know if people want to see backs, but there you go. Do this kit fine. The Ada's fine. I have no problems with the Ada. The needle was fine because needles are needles most of the time, but the thread is horrible. I changed this out to regular just DMC white. I said it was B5200. It's not. It's just plain old white. Just plain old white floss. Um, the floss that came with it, I think I stitched somewhere in the middle, and it was knotting up terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible. So, that was on. And then I have a new whip. And I'm serious when I say it, I'll literally try to find the picture of it completed. Because it's somewhere around here. Where is it? No. Anyway, I am working on a project called the Tudor Oak Scissor Keep. And I cannot find the finished project, so maybe on the video, I will... Another video, I'll try to find the picture. Uh, what you do is you do these little squares. I think it's 45 stitches across. And this is on 18 count Hunter Green Ada. And you stitch this design. And it's like here, there's four points and then leaves. And then on this, it's going to be the same green square. And it's going to have like multiple colors, different like oak. And then I will cut this apart and I will finish it. And I have the cording with it. It kit comes with a cording, and what you do is you make a scissor keep, and it goes, isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? So, that's a kit that I've had forever that I wanted to finish. Uh, let's see. And then my next project is something. There's a Stitch Mania Stitch Along about love, and I'm serious when I say I'm going to challenge myself to finish Love Nest by Mill Hill Button and Beaded. Um, I started this a long time ago, and um, 
I've never finished it. That's as far as I've gotten. And I actually love it, so I don't know what the problem is. I think it's just time because it does take time. And I actually like to, you know, sit down with my beads and take time with those. So that's going to be my love project for my cross stitch. It's fun for a coffee, tea, and me. I think I showed you guys what I'm doing. Sorry to leave you guys. Um, it's a pattern free off of Plum Street Samplers, and it's called Coffin Buzz. And so I'm not showing you anything bad. Um, I don't have a picture of the completed product. I just have a picture of the pattern. And I signed my little frosted pumpkin notebook. And I'm going to do it on this Fiddler Oatmeal Ada. And I'm going to finish it out in like a dark chocolate. I haven't actually... Picked a thread, but I know that I'm going to edge this tonight. I've got to read a chapter in my Old Testament studies, and I'm going to edge this tonight. And then I'm going to get and listen to my scriptures that I have to read every night. And you can, we've got to where in our class, our professor lets us listen to the ESV Bible on the iPad, and I'm going to listen to the scriptures. And I'm going to start cross-stitching on my coffee, tea, and me sampler. Um... I was supposed to be in the stash and start restraint, and I've actually done a pretty good job. The worst thing I've done is needle minders, but now the only other whip I've got is my Cardinal, and I have not made progress on it. So I figure once I get Lady of Charlotte done this week, I will probably put that on scroll frame and set it up in my living room and just let that be in my face until, you know, I can get it done. Um, usually it's not... It's not that I don't want to stitch it. It's just, it's in my box right now, and I don't have it set up, and so that's what's going on. This right here, what, what? Bailey is all of a sudden sad. You won't see Bailey. Okay, this is Dimensions, and it's called Winter Cardinals. And right now, I'm in the tail part of this, and it's got a glare. Look at that. Oh, upside down. It's not going to be any better. Um, Right here, the feathers. That's uh, that's where I'm at. And like I said, I'll make faster progress when I get this set up on a scroll frame in my living room. That's how I got my lighthouse sampler done as I stuck that sucker in the center. There you are, you little beast. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'll have to explain that. Go in. Christmas lights. Um, this right here is a card that I started for my niece. I got like halfway done on the bear's head and then this sucker went missing. And I had to clean out my craft study. I did that like one night when I really didn't want to write a paper. I actually kind of sat down and cleaned out my craft study. Um, and when I did, I come across the pattern for this and I'm like, where's the kit? I looked everywhere and couldn't find the kit. Well, apparently it was inside the um, Dimensions box stuff. Okay. I'm going to put that right there. Um, maybe if I get some things needed up, I'll show you my rolling cart. But there's a metal rolling cart that I got from Michael's. And the thing, that sucker little rolls around. And they had it for like 50% off. And it was like 25 bucks, Which is a whole lot cheaper than the version that I wanted from Ikea. Okay, last but not least, if there's anything that I've learned from watching videos on Floss Tube is that you need to be prepared. And today is a stand-up video for some reason because I'm nuts. This is a collector's edition County Cross Stitch holiday ornament that I've had forever. And when I was cleaning out my cross stitch stash in my closet, I come across this and the box just takes up so much space. And I said, you know what? I'm going to get this thing ready to stitch. So here it is. Comes with a pattern. Ta-da! And the, where is it? Where is it? Okay. The linen. I think it's cashew linen. And so I, when I got out the sewing machine the other night to edge my completed whips that I should have already whipped, I edged this before I got started. So 
comes with the fabric finish it, everything, and it comes with the DMC charms and the stars. I'm talking about this thing came out 2000, so I've had this ornament for 16 years. I mean, it's time. It's time. So I have put that in my whip box for like when I'm at the doctor's office or whatever. Come here, babe. Come here. Come here. Come here, baby girl. Come here. Oh. This is Bebe. I think you guys have seen her before. Um, we can't take her to the trimmers because she's absolutely terrified of the clippers, so. And here they all are. Okay, just a second. Just a second, okay? Okay. Okay, just a second. Uh, look what Mommy did. She made a mess. She made a mess. Okay. Yeah, I talk sometimes sweeter to my dogs than I do my kids. Hello, darling. And he just laid on top of my lips. Oh, well. Um... Bert's busy. Um, when you take a week off, being sick, a lot of parents want to know where you're at. Um, I had to call a lot of parents to reassign kids on some assignments. And parents are so funny when you call them about their kids. Hey, baby. Um, what they will do is they will, they automatically think their kid's in trouble. And I'm actually kind of, I'm not like the disciplinarian or anything. I'm actually the good guy, you know. I'm the good guy. I call and I get stuff for your kids if they need it or I help the parent out. That's what I do. So it's like I tell my boss, we could do a stand-up comedy round about some of the parents that I call because they're like, hi, I'm calling about your son. They're like, what do he do? What do he do? Is he in trouble? Is he getting suspended? No, no, he's not getting suspended. I'm actually here to help you do such and such. Oh, okay. So once you call the parents, let them know that you're sending a note home. Then you go to the school and explain to the kid, here's a note. I need your parent to sign, but I need you to bring it back to me. But understand you're not in trouble, but your mommy already knows about this. So, there's like a lot of process, you know, to go meet with these kids. So, it's been interesting getting back to the swing of things. Um, school, I was very depressed. Um, my first discussion, my professor gave me a 64. Oh, my gosh. And that's a D. Um, I was mortified. Because I was like, I know how to do this. What's wrong? And um, they said, well, you're totally off point. And then I wrote a paper. But the professor didn't say what she wanted the paper about. She said for us to pick a social science theory. And so since I have a deep heart for adoption and fostering and child abuse and long-term effects, I did a paper on the long-term effects of child abuse in foster adoptive kids. I got an F, 11 out of 20, F. My professor said, that's not even what I asked you to do. No, you asked for a social disorder, and that is a disorder. That is a, because some kids who go through that, they can't function in later life. Yeah, you didn't say, don't choose this. You said to do this. So I e emailed my professor, and, and this was your paper, your big paper, at the end of this eight-week course. It's like this big 10, 12-page term paper that you've got to do. And you've got to get their approval. And then I had to do a PowerPoint presentation last week that was a preview of my final PowerPoint presentation. And I had to get an approval. And I made an A on that one, thank God. It's because like I finally figured out what the professor wanted. So I'm at work yesterday, and I'm feeling fine because, I mean... Work's stressful, life's stressful. Like I said, we all have stress. Nobody's more stressful than the other. We just, you know, we all deal with it differently and have different things we deal with. And the professor said, since so many of you didn't do so well on your first assignment, I'm letting you have a do-over to present your final presentation. It's due Friday. And I called my husband and I said, you know, you know, my life was good, but then my stress level went from like, awesome, like a six to like a 20. Because now I've got to take a test, write a paper, and then I've got to write a five to six page term paper on the one that I thought I was doing right. But now I've got to redo it. But um, it's like my husband and I said last night, you know, if you're not presenting your 
course requirements to your students, then odds are, odds are there's a gap in communication somewhere. So, who knows? I will be glad to let you guys know that I am passing Old Testament. I have a 80 in there. I don't know how long I'll have an 80. And in the other class, I have like a 78. And it's like my mother said, you got four kids, you're working, you're going to school, you're keeping up a house, you're passing. And I was all for magna cum laude. I wanted to walk across that stage with that pretty cord. Heck with that. I just, you know, I'm like, just one cord and a diploma is, is focused right now. So that's, that's where I'm at. That's enough on that. I'm um, learning how to balance school. And as indications by Lady, he's over here yawning. So apparently I'm bored everybody to tears. Happy stitching. I hope you guys have a happy week. I didn't talk about Jen Hatmaker this week. And I did. I did. I talked about bras. And did I talk about um, workout pants? Because my daughter said that uh, that was rude. That I shouldn't have said that. But um, then she come down the hall. And I, her purpose was this. She come down the hall with a pair of workout pants on with a button-up shirt. No. And I'm like, you're 10. You have a butt and you're getting boobs. No, you're not wearing that to school. On the exciting note with my kids, I have three kids that are in the robotics competitions and the robotics in the state of Alabama. And so we had a, hello, darling. We had a district robotics meet on Saturday. So... I went doped up with cough medicine, which was cool because when you coughed, it was like you had the plague and people were like, you know, it was like party of the sea because they did not want to be around me. But my kids, uh, for the first time, my younger, my two younger robotics students, their team, first time entering a robotics competition, placed 12th out of 30 teams. I was so proud of them because they were some of the youngest competitors there. And then my son's team, that's on the middle school, my oldest son's team that's on the middle school level, I've got three boys and one girl. So it's my son and my daughter that's on the elementary team. And then my my oldest son, his team that's on the middle school level, they placed 15th out of 30. So it's not too shabby. So sounds like we have more competitions coming up. Um, it's very neat. I'll try to video it so you guys can see it. Literally, the robots look like Wally. So, hint, mommy had to have a new needle monitor. Wally. Um, and they're Vex. V-E-X Robotics. Um, Minecraft Storm, if you ever get a chance to look at that. It's really cool. You program the robots to do different things, like move balls and everything. My daughter and my son can actually explain it to you better. But all I know is we went to these meets, and people were clapping and shouting, Yay! And I still had no clue what they had done. But it was awesome, and I'm proud of them, and they've stuck. What is on the bottom of that sock? Is that, a, oh, I thought that was a piece of duct tape. It's a penguin. Sorry. Um, so, that's what's going on in the world of Amanda Brownie Stitch Love. Um, dogs being shot, cross stitch being done, work being caught up, professors being a jerk. <laughs> well, she is. And um, my kids are a One's a he. Oh, the, oh my gosh, the Old Testament professor is. He says that I'm not defining hermeneutics enough with my quotes. And I'm like, dude, I don't even understand hermeneutics. So he said that I contradicted hermeneutics with my statement. And I'm like, I don't even understand hermeneutics. I just, I don't understand it. Look it up. It's the scriptural study of the biblical text of the Old Testament and the Bible. And translation of the Bible. So if you need to know, now you do. Y'all have an awesome stitchy week. And I hope you enjoy my new stitchy spot. Because I do. I actually cook it on my PJs. And stretch out here and put my laptop in my lap. And I do schoolwork. And then sometimes I pop this lamp up and I cross stitch. And it's turned out to be the most awesome thing. So if my sister sees this. Thank you, Jill. Um, for this awesome chase lounge. I'll, I'm sure I'll pay dearly for this, but it'll be worth it. It'll be totally worth it because I'm stretching out. And uh, thank you, Lala, for uh, moving out so Mama can get new living room suit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We miss we miss our, our Lala and Rue very, very much while they're off at college. So um, 
We got to do something to pass the time while they're gone, right? They're not going to watch this video, but if they do, this is me missing you. Happy Stitchy Week, everybody. God bless.